the great auk bred on rocky, isolated islands with easy access to the ocean and a plentiful food supply, a rarity in nature that provided only a few breeding sites for the great ox. When not breeding, they spent their time foraging in the waters of the North Atlantic. It was a powerful swimmer, a trait that it used in hunting. Its favorite prey were fish. Although agile in the water, it was clumsy on land. Great auk pairs mated for life. They nested in extremely dense and social colonies. The great auk was an important part of many Native American cultures, both as a food source and as a symbolic item. Many maritime archaic people were buried with great auk bones. One burial discovered included someone covered by more than 200 great auk beaks, which are presumed to be the remnants of a cloak made of great auk skins. Early European explorers to the Americas used the great auk as a convenient food source or as fishing bait, reducing its numbers. The bird's down was in high demand in Europe, a factor that largely eliminated the European populations by the mid-16th century. Scientists soon began to realize that the great auk was disappearing and it became the beneficiary of many early environmental laws, but this proved ineffectual. On 3 June 1844, the last two confirmed specimens were killed on Eldi, off the coast of Iceland, ending the last known breeding attempt. Chondrostoma scadrense was described from nine specimens caught 100 years ago. Its habitat in the late 19th century Lake Scatter. Since then, in spite of intensive investigations of its only known range and no specimens have been recorded. Corrigonus restrictus is an extinct freshwater fish from the family Salmonidae. It was originally discovered in Lake Morat in Switzerland. The Portuguese ibex is an extinct subspecies of Spanish ibex that inhabited the north mountainous zones of Portugal. Until 1800, the Portuguese ibex was widespread in its range, but thereafter its decline was rapid as hunting pressure increased. Local hunters did not respect the closed hunting seasons and shot Portuguese ibexes when the herds came down to lower altitudes in May. Local people hunted it for its meat and for the bizarre stones in its stomach which were regarded as potent medicine and antidotes for poisons of all kind. By 1870, this ibex was a rare animal. The last herd of about a dozen animals was recorded in 1886. The Caucasian moose was a subspecies of moose found in the Caucasus Mountains. It is widely believed to be extinct. The subspecies was quite common until the mid-19th century, when populations began to decrease due to overhunting. The Himalayan quail is a medium-sized quail belonging to the pheasant family. It was last reported in 1876 and is feared extinct. All records of the Himalayan quail are in the altitude range of 1650 to 2400 meters. They were seen in patches of tall grass and brushwood on steep hillsides, particularly on the crests of south or east-facing slopes. The locations where they were historically found have been greatly altered by human activity and the current habitats in these locations may not represent their normal habitat requirements.
Apart from the fact that it fed on fish, almost nothing else is known about the spectacled cormorant. The population declined quickly after further visitors to the area started collecting the birds for food and feathers, and their reports of profitable whaling grounds and large populations of arctic foxes and other animals with valuable pelts led to a massive influx of whalers and fur traders into the region, the last birds were reported to have lived around 1850. Bonin Grosbeak was a retiring, although not shy bird, and was usually found singly or in pairs. It fed on fruits and buds which were primarily picked up from the ground or low shrubs. It rarely was observed to perch in trees, being apparently rather phlegmatic and somewhat reluctant to fly. When the Rogers Ringgold North Pacific Exploring and Surveying Expedition called at Chichijima in 1854, naturalist William Stimson could not find the birds. What he did find, however, were rats and feral goats, sheep, dogs and cats, in addition to the pigs that were already present in 1828. It probably succumbed soon after 1830 to habitat destruction and predation by the introduced mammals. The bone-in thrush is not among the birds observed or collected by the Beachy Pacific Expedition which called at Chichijima in 1827. It was only found the following year. When Kitlitz took the five specimens, he considered them common enough around the landing site. It is unknown why Beachy's expedition, which landed at the same location, did not find them. Instead, they encountered rats and feral goats, dogs and cats. Just like the Bonin Grosbeak, the Bonin Thrush probably succumbed soon. After 1830 to predation by the introduced mammals and habitat destruction. The Bonin Wood Pigeon was a medium-sized pigeon. The upper parts of the pigeon's body were grayish-black with iridescence except on wing and tail. This pigeon died out late in the 19th century as a result of deforestation, hunting, and predation by introduced rats and cats. The Bonin Nankin Night Heron became extinct only 50 years after its description. The last specimen was taken in 1889. Six museum specimens exist. The most likely reason for its extinction is predation by rats and feral cats. However, collectors fascinated by its plumes may also have been responsible. Birds shot for use in millinery would not have ended up in scientific collections. Cebu hanging parrot has a distinctive scarlet tail with faint patches of red on its head. Females lack the red throat and breast patch, as opposed to males. Like other bleeding hearts, the Sulu bleeding heart is primarily a sedentary bird, feeding on the forest floor and flying only for short distances. It only perches in trees in order to roost or mate. When alarmed, bleeding hearts run quickly into nearby undergrowth. It is very elusive in its forested habitat, and nothing else is known about its behavior. The Seau Scops Owl is a owl species probably extinct which may even be extinct. They live on Siao Island, north of Sulawesi and were forest dwellers. Their habitat is being lost to excessive logging of the forest on the island and some think there would be very few if any individuals left. Southern shrub frog is an extinct species of frog. It was endemic to Sri Lanka. This species is known to science only from the lectotype. 
there have been no records since the species was described in 1869, from material collected in southern Sri Lanka, so it is now believed to be extinct. Recent, extensive field surveys of the amphibian fauna of Sri Lanka have failed to rediscover this frog along with many other members of this genus. The sharp snout pygmy tree frog was also a species of frog. It was endemic to Sri Lanka where it is extinct, though it might occur or have occurred in India too. The habitat of the broad-faced potaroo is almost entirely unknown, but, unlike its relatives, they do not seem to have lived in dense understories in forests. An assessment of documents prior to the 20th century concluded the only ecological change to affect the population were anecdotal reports of a disease, similar to one that had resulted in the sudden absence of similar species. A synthesis combining other historical evidence proposes what may have been an epizootic during the 1890s that precipitated their extinction. Tahiti sandpiper was discovered in 1773 during Captain Cook's second voyage, when a single specimen seems to have been collected, but it became extinct in the 19th century. Only one museum specimen is known to exist. The Tahiti sandpiper is believed to have occurred near small streams. The large Palau flying fox is an extinct species of medium-sized megabats from the Palau Islands in Micronesia. It had brownish fur with long, silvery hairs on its belly, and a wingspan of about 60 centimeters. It probably became extinct around 1874, possibly due to overhunting. <laughs> 